Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of the Hunt series, where today we're going to be looking at the Warp Terminal. Uh, the Warp Terminal is a Mac application that basically is a modernized version of lots of terminal apps combined together. This is actually a pretty good summary. This is the FIG website, by the way. It's basically an autocomplete engine that um, Warp uses for autocomplete prompts. And essentially, like it lays out these terminals that it is compatible with, right? You have Mac Terminal, iTerm, Hyper, VS Code, Tabby, and Alacrity, right? All these ones right here. And I use Alacrity right here because that is probably one of the more faster terminals. It's GPU accelerated, um, which means that I'm like, I, I really do value response times, but I have used all of these actually, um, Tabby, uh, Hyper, and iTerm, as well as the terminal before as well. What I really wanted for my terminal was something that looked as good as Hyper, worked as well as Tabby, and was as fast as Alacrity with the prompt of Vic. And great thing about Warp is that it actually ut utilizes all of those while having lots more features while having lots more features than many other terminals. So let's get into what that kind of looks like. Essentially, it gives you a few welcome tips to get started, and I've completed all those welcome tips, which is very sick. And it gives you a setting prompt to actually modify the appearance, the font size, or and the font as well, um, different features enabled and disabled. But you'll see that even if you haven't set up a terminal prompt, or a proper terminal prompt, um, and you haven't customized it before, it actually comes with a built-in default prompt, which is kind of like space prompt, um, which I already use. So when you get started, it kind of just looks like a normal terminal, right? Um, except you have this like horizontal line here, and that kind of like indicates it's a block. So if I say ls, then it combines the input and the output, and has it with this horizontal div divider or separator. And if I like do this a few times, I can actually navigate it and basically perform actions on all of these. So right click, I can copy command, copy output, copy both, create a permalink, right? Do whatever I want with these ones. And basically this kind of allows like a text editor like functionality. And one thing you might notice right away is that once you actually start using it, you actually have the same keyboard shortcuts that are available within an actual text editor. And that's what Warp kind of tries to go with. It tries to make more of a actual text editor experience and a little bit better for beginners, especially. It also gives a great history as to what you were doing. So of course it has the regeneration of the terminal um, once you log off, kind of like how Tmux has it before. But even if you go into a file, a directory, like, like for example, I'm going to projects, um, and I could go travel back out of that directory, it can see, you can see that it actually says that I was in projects when this command was executed. And it includes that in the block timestamp, right? So it includes lots of data for that type of command. On top of that, autocomplete is there as well. You, pro you probably already guessed with fig. So you can look at um, directories, you can do files, you can autocomplete com commands, right? A great thing as well is that you also have the full command prompt, kind of like VS Code, where if you don't know the keyboard shortcut to a specific path um, or commands, then you can just have the command prompt and it allows you to actually search whatever you'd want up. So for example, I have the AI command search and I want to say log in as root and it does use its natural language processing to give me a suggestion eventually, yeah, and then it gives me a suggestion I can go in and log in as root. Of course, it also gives great outlining of where it is as well, because for example, that command failed. For example, I don't have htop installed, but I do have top installed. And one great thing I noticed about warp as well is its padding. Let's say we're going to NVim and read a uh, repository, then the padding actually goes away and it kind of like embraces it like a normal text editor, kind of like kind of like Alacrity. Although there is some padding on the right side, I'm not sure why that's there, but maybe that can be customized, I'm not exactly sure yet. One thing it also has is workflows. So if you wanted to uh, run commands that you don't completely remember the name of, then you can just search a workflow and you could let's say undo a git commit or undo git add, right? And then actually, puts you into that file, kind of like a snippet in VS Code, which is pretty sick. On top of that, in terms of customization, you can go into appearance and set lots of current themes, right? But since the front facing side of Warp is open sourced, you can have lots of themes, including OneDark, which I think is pretty nice because I'm a fan of OneDark. Of course, you have access to tab navigation as well, creating as many, as many tabs as you'd like. You can click plant panes, horizontal and vertical, um, and then you can close those panes, of course. You have a full fuzzy finder history, which with lots of autocomplete. Another great thing about the terminal is command lookup, right? So you can, I already told you, you can look up commands, but you can actually see documentation for all of the existing commands as well. And speaking of documentation, they're also thinking of looking at implementing uh, documentation inside of the terminal, which I think is pretty sweet, especially for those man pages that have lots of headings and lots of sections. And the great thing about all of this is that it is fully native GPU accelerated. But that is it for me today. If you did like this video, then please drop a like down below and leave a comment if you want to see more videos like this. I'll see you in the next video.